you know what, I've had enough of uh, being held in contempt. Hey, welcome to another video from Turning the Page. If you're looking at on YouTube, you'll notice I've got a big yeah. um, scar on the top of my nose. It's another story for another day, but yeah, I sort of hurt the top of my nose. So please, please ignore that. <laughs> but uh, today's topic is about being held in contempt. And this particular person that I'm thinking of, it was like they were held at the bottom of the pecking order. You know, the pecking order that's in um, uh, chicken poops. You know, there's there's the big, big hen and then right down there's a little, often at the bottom of the pecking order, there's another peck, hen that just keeps on getting pecked at all the time. That's the bottom one. And people, the, for this particular person, they... People just had a low opinion of. Um, the word contempt, we don't often use, do we? To be held in contempt, in a general sense, means that the person is held and despised or they're, they're strongly disapproved, um, disapproved of. Recently, I sent this image, and I'm sorry, you'll have to come over to uh, the blog to see it. But it's just of this picture of this, I think it's a young girl, but I'm not sure. Um... And she's cowered over like this with her hand reaching up to her head and just looks like she's just been beaten down or, yeah, she looks really tired and there's a mess. And uh, when I looked at it, I often want look at images like this. I wonder, what do I see in the image? What is her story? Why is she there? Because art, visual art, um, contain, contains something that the artist wants to convey but it also connects with what the viewer sees and reads into the story and with this particular image there came like a little meme a little sentence across the top and it said every time I dress something that bothered me I became the problem every time I dress something that bothered me I became the problem and I don't know whether those were the words of the artist or someone else, but I kind of know that feeling is that you address something and you become the problem. You become the problem. You And people hold you in a kind of scorning uh, um, attitude that really sort of cuts down to really inner child stuff. And just like this picture, the child retreats, uh, falls to the floor, backs into a corner and just wants to get swallowed up by uh, that sense of contempt of being scorned. Uh, into this picture, I see someone coming and uh, sitting down beside the child, um, not necessarily saying much, but just sitting there uh, wanting them to know that they're not alone. That uh, that this that that they don't hold them in scorn or contempt, that they have a view of uh, perfect love towards them. And I was reading this passage in um, biblical passage Psalm 123. It says, "To you I, I lift up my eyes, you who are enthroned in the heavens." As a servant, eyes of a servant look to the hands of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. I just want to say that we've had more than enough of contempt. You can feel the weight of it, just I've had enough. He goes on, or she, he goes on, our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. And the psalmist writes about just the weight of people's scorn and, and contempt. Um, and I felt like there's like invisible arms just holding them down. And it becomes so much so, I think, that uh, that feeling of contempt and scorn becomes like an identity you carry. And um, yet this writer, the psalmist, cries out to God, uh, can you take me out of this jail of contempt that I'm in? Um, 
And I think of the prodigal son going back to the loving father. He says, look, I'm, have mercy on me. I, I don't want to be a son again. I, I'd just be happy to be a servant. You must have contempt on me. Of course he didn't. Um, another thought is, can you affirm me in some kindly sort of parental way? And yet you know, the strongest bonds, I think, that we have around contempt are the bonds that we express towards ourselves, the self-contempt, the self-scorn, um, the expectations of others upon us that nobody could fulfill. Uh, and so we kind of wrap ourselves with chains of contempt um, uh, to keep ourselves in our place. Uh, but the psalmist says, uh, where do you, and I've got to ask you, where do your eyes go? Where do you give your attention? Look, I, I have personally walked some paths where people have scorned me and they've had contempt on my hearts towards me. And maybe their hearts, maybe some of them are very well off and at ease and don't have really great many problems. Yet they look down on me and they look down on people like myself. And... I've got to ask myself, where, where am I looking at my, my, my eyes? Am I looking towards them for my approval or am I looking towards God? And I think of the martyr uh, Stephen in Acts where they are throwing stones at him. You know, that's too death. They killed him with stones. Um, and the contempt and the scorn they had on him. And he looks to heaven for uh, his approval. And in the Psalms, it says, to you I lift my eyes, uh, O oh, you who are enthroned in the heavens. And the, the Psalmist sings us to focus on God, who knows all and forgives all. Uh, and there, there's no such word in, uh, called contempt or scorn in, do, in God's dictionary. That's just not even there. Um, it's perfect love. So how do we... Release ourselves out of contempt. Um, I think you got to release those bonds and give them to God. You know, God does not like their creation to have heavy chains wrapped around their creation. Um, you've got to be willing to let that contempt go and give it to God. Look to God for that, for um, your identity, of who you are. Number two, people are holding you, if people are holding you in a sense of contempt and scorn, well, that may actually say more about them than it does about you. Uh, your identity is elsewhere, not in their approval or, or disapproval. And daily, uh, I would encourage you um, to imagine that someone is stooping down, stooping down, to be around that child of yours that is so condemned and held down. Like a divine master or divine mistress, they're just going to sit next to you and give you freedom and encourage you to, to dance. You see, it was never about you and them, and, and it was about you and God. And favourite Mother Teresa quote, I've got to read this one. People are often unreasonable, illogical, self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you're kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some friends, false friends, and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. The good you do today, oh, um, give the world the best you have and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it was between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. Look. If people are pouring scorn and contempt on you, recognize that God doesn't. There is no scorn, there is no contempt from God at you at all. 
is complete and utter grace and mercy. Okay, bye.